Hello, everyone. All right. Now that we have kind of an idea of what a store procedure is and its purpose and what we're going to do with it, let's talk about how to write a store procedure. Again, in this case, it's a two-step process. The first process is to actually build the store procedure within our database management system. In this case, our, 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 our relational database management system. Getting ads popping up. Sorry about that. What I provided you in... Um, uh, the course uh, is a resource that has a nice tutorial called SQL Server Tutorial.net. It has a nice uh, tutorial I found for uh, SQL Server Store procedures. So, uh, well, might as well use it, right? <laughs> uh, and it's actually very, very good. Uh, as you'll see as you go through it, uh, we'll get into it has section one, getting started with store uh, SQL Server Store procedures. It'll get into the control of flow of statements. It'll get into cursors. And it'll get into exception handling. And finally, dynamic SQL. For this course, we're really just going to focus on section one. So I don't know if you said who or if you said hey. Uh, but um, you'll get into more as you kind of get into IT 112, uh, which is a second database course. So if you're interested in learning more, getting into cursors and so on, you go a little bit more deeper into store procedures and what you can actually do in there. Does that make sense? All right, but for here, like I said, most of what we're going to do is basically walk through this section one here. If I click on this, the first thing it's going to kind of show you is, I think, there you go, is how to build your first store procedure. I'm not going to read through this. I'm actually going to show it to you here in a second. But what you'll see here in this, we have a very simple database. They, got, they have one called Bike Stores, and here's our select statement, right? Our goal here is, is to take this select statement and build what's called a procedure. Again, a procedure is a snippet of code that can be called. That's what we're basically doing here. We're building a procedure within SQL Server that we can call it that will execute this based upon us calling it versus writing it over and over and over again. Okay, so you can take a look at this and go through how you actually do it. It kind of gives you step by step. We're going to go ahead and do it ourselves here. Uh, but it, it's, it's a nice, it's, I really like this. It does a really nice job in showing you how to go ahead and execute these things, okay? And uh, go from there. All right, so let's go ahead and kind of get into this a little bit. Um, once again, I'm using my DBMS database, right? Uh, DBMS College database. And uh, I have in my DBMS College database, if you recall, cities, courses, instructors, races, and states, okay? It's my second version here. And here I have a very simple select statement, right? That if I take this select statement and I execute it, because I'm, I'm using my DBMS College database right there, it returns the states that are actually within my database. Cool, right? I could probably use that to populate my drop downs or whatever uh, with this very simple select statement. You probably have already done that, right? The thing is, I could actually have, you know, you guys may have done this already in your project where you have multiple places where you're constantly calling the states table to do the exact same thing over and over and over again. And then you're writing, I know it's simplistic, but you're writing, <coughs> excuse me, this um, select statement. Instead of doing that, why don't we write it one time? Make sure it's working. Make sure everything's fine. And then create a stored procedure, and all we got to do is call it, and it'll execute. Again, there's really a nice analogy there to what you've done in programming in regards to writing a piece of code one time and executing it within a module. And for those of you who have taken object-oriented with programming, it's sort of the same thing when it comes to a class, writing a class which is basically 100% around reuse, right, that everybody can use it. That's the same goal here. And not only you can be able to use the store procedure, but anybody within your enterprise, meaning the places that you actually work for, can use the same store procedure. So if your company is writing all kinds of applications and within there you're constantly uh, want to get state out of it, you know, you want you building maybe a drop down for state and you're doing it, your friend's doing it, and another coworker's doing it, another coworker's doing it, right at one time. Okay? And all you gotta do is call the store procedure. All right? So in this case, how do we do this? Well, once again, this is your template. 
it's in that resource there, and I also provided you some uh, some uh, examples. Uh, but the template of this is create procedure, and you're going to name it. This is the thing you will change. Every procedure has to have its own name. In this case, I'm going to call it USP for uh, user stored procedure. User stored procedure. That's the Hungarian notation for a stored procedure. And then basically a descriptive, uh, descriptive words to actually state what the stored procedure is doing. In this case, it's going to list the state. As, begin, and end, okay? In this case, right now, all we're really going to do is create some procedure. The name will keep as as it is right here. Begin is where the actual um, code belongs. I guess in this case, a query belongs. And end actually ends that query. So if I put in here, oops, I don't want to put that one in there. Let's go back. Sorry about that. Confused at all. Let's go back to here. And if I grab my query that I already know it works, I can stick that right there, okay? And so in this case here, what I'm doing is, in this what this is actually doing is creating the stored procedure. You will only do this once. It's like creating a table. You just do this one time. Now, I know you guys have created tables over and over again based upon, you know, your assignments and so on, but you also deleted the tables before you recreate them. You're going to create this once, okay? And once you're done with this, you're done with it, okay? Can you drop a stored procedure? The answer is yes. Absolutely, you can, just like you drop a table. But in this case here, this is how you would do it. Make sense? Okay? If I executed this and I get commands completed successfully, let's go over and look at our database, okay? Let's get back to here. I'm going to come back up here. Whoops, we'll go right there. And we will come down to where are we at? Programmability and under stored procedures. And we will see that that's stored procedures there. Let me kind of collapse my tables here. And so this is under the database. Every database has this under programmability. Programmability, I think I'm saying that right. You will find stored procedures. So every stored procedure that has been created for this database will line up here, okay? How did this work? Once again, I made sure I'm on my database, okay? I made sure I'm there. I selected my database that's actually in my piece there. Make sure you do that. And based upon me being there, I created this stored procedure and it stuck it within my database. So when I open my database, those stored procedures, that's like our tables, become available to us. Does that make sense? Pretty simple, huh? Now, of course, we can make our stored procedures as, as, as complex as we want, okay? Or, oops, here we go, control. Uh, and we can do joins, all right? We can very easily do joins. So let's go ahead and do a quick join here. And maybe I will do, uh, let's see, what do we want to do here real fast? And so I'm going to do list, let's do list students, okay? So I don't, I'm on, I need to make sure every time I do a create, I don't duplicate the name or it's going to give me an error, okay? So I'm going to do list students. So in this case here, I'm going to do, uh, I have from uh, T students um, and we'll do go we'll go ahead and do our asses T S join and I will do uh, T states okay and we will go ahead and do this on uh, T S see this T states will be as uh, T S T there you go as uh, boom and we'll get down to the state ID and equal to uh, T states, uh, oops, TST, I should say. It's always fun to program in front of everybody. All right. And let's see. Uh, should I join anything else here? I guess I could. I could also join uh, T uh, cities uh, as TC. Uh, and we'll do this on. Uh, tc dot city id equal to ts dot city id and so okay i guess we got one more here let's go ahead and complete this whole thing and we'll do t uh, race i see races in there yeah there it is as tr and oops tr and on tr dot race id it's going to be equal to ts dot race id pretty cool all right uh, I don't know. And so what we'll do is we'll bring back, uh, let's see, ts dot first name, uh, comma ts dot last name, comma ts dot state, 
Uh, where's my state at? T. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, did that wrong. TST dot. There's the state. Uh, TC dot city and TR dot uh, dot race. There you go. So we'll bring that back right now. We'll order this by I don't know TS dot last name. Okay. And there we go. So in this case here, if I just execute this query, I, you know, I'm just highlighting that. I'm going to execute this query. There is my results from this. We got the James Jones, uh, Ohio, Cincinnati, Caucasian, and so on. All right? Pretty cool. Once again, I might use this query over and over again in my applications. Instead of doing that, let's create a stored procedure. I called it this USP list students. And in doing so, I execute it. And it completed successfully. I come back over here. I go ahead and let's see. Let's go ahead and refresh this. Look at my stored procedures. I now have two stored procedures. Yay me, right? Okay. Is that hard? Uh, at least for a beginning, hopefully not. And so there you go. How do you execute these? You can actually execute these if you wanted to. And all you need to do is just say execute. You can actually do it here. Oops, sorry, new query. And we say execute. This right here. And we'll say execute. And there it is. Sort of what we're going to do in our programming, but you can actually do it here too. That's how you, the beginning of writing stored procedures. I'm going to have a follow-up video that will show you how to now pass parameters to your stored procedures. Okay? And we'll play around with those.